howdy today is uh, Monday July 15th I'm in uh, Danville New York at the TA truck stop and uh, I'm on my way with a new load I picked up in Pennsylvania going back to Ontario and just this morning I finally got rid of that uh, boom lift that I picked up in Alberta and brought to uh, uh, to a town near Philadelphia, PA. Uh, and of course I feel a bit tired and just out of curiosity I looked at my uh, logbook and I drove by the book no violations all except that lady at the inspection station, where was it? Uh, Minnesota, Wyoming said I'm supposed to mark uh, time when I'm sleeping as sleeper not off duty everything else was legal but anyway just one week ago or eight days to be exact on July 8th on Monday right I unloaded my uh, 60 foot long tank in Calgary uh, and then right away I found a new load and I drove uh, 187 miles north to Nisku, Alberta, where I picked up that first boom lift. Then in the morning on the next day, 9th, I went to pick up the second one. It wasn't ready, so I spent the whole day and whole night waiting there. And then on the 10th, which was uh, Wednesday, they told me drop it in Edmonton and basically you forget about it, right? And they paid us for two days detention of like 1500 bucks. And then I went to a truck stop on the 10th and three hours later they told me that load was uh, still active and now they wanted us to take uh, one machine, one boom lift and bring it to uh, Philadelphia, PA for I think it was like 3400 bucks, right? So on the 10th on Wednesday I loaded and started driving, I did 360 miles uh, Thursday, July 11, I did 536 miles uh, Friday, July 12th, I did 520 miles. Uh, Saturday, July 13th, I did uh, 519 miles. And Sunday, July 14th, I did 401 miles. And then that's where I drew the line. I, w I was tired, so I finished early and uh, booked a room at the hotel in, uh, where was I? Uh, Carlisle. Carlisle, PA just two hours uh, away from the consignee and I just relaxed a bit you know had a nice uh, dinner had a glass of wine the restaurant was uh, uh, not bad at the hotel and had a shower you know and then got uh, today 15th I started like real early six o'clock I was already driving and uh, delivered that machine then drove two hours to Harrisburg to pick up this uh, new forklift that I have on my deck now and then started driving like a maniac uh, towards the Canadian border so I did 491 miles today counting everything so I mean, I'm looking at these numbers here and it's amazing you know uh, I was so motivated because I'm picking up my new trailer this week right so uh, first of all I had to set aside money for bills and then I thought I owed these guys a uh, thousand bucks and then today I learned that it's not a thousand dollars because I thought that we agreed I gave him two thousand dollars right I gave him one thousand so I thought hey just one thousand left now it turns out uh, the price of my trailer was in US dollars because it's made in US right but the dealer is uh, Canadian and I bank at a, at, a, at a Canadian bank, of course we use Canadian dollars, so they had to, tra to transfer that amount into Canadian. Now all of a sudden, 38,000 US became 41,000 Canadian. And that, because of that, the uh, original deposit became 2,100 bucks, right? And then they want HST or sales tax on top of that, which I forgot, you know, and that's uh, 13%, that's another 260 bucks plus on top of that and then there's licensing fee there's some kind of admin fee but the worst thing I really did not like is that the the broker the financial broker that uh, got me financed 
Uh, send me an invoice and it says uh, uh, administration fee. Like that guy, the dealer charges, like the guy that's actually giving the money, right? Uh, the financial company, the real financial company, that has uh, like 125 bucks financial fee. Now this guy, the financial broker that got me in touch with that financial company, these guys don't have any money. They just uh, kind of uh, take your application and they shop around, see who's interested, who can finance you. And then I, I assume they got the commission from the lender. And I think they, I still think they probably do it, just that they, they are too greedy, you know. I thought they were nice guys. Now it turns out they want 500 bucks from me now. I said, wait a second, you never told me anything about uh, any administration fees. Oh, I apologize if uh, I thought, you know, it's our company policy. We, we always charge anywhere, depending on the complexity of the case. He says sometimes uh, basically how bad your credit is, how difficult it is to find... Uh, uh, loan for you, so I guess my credit was not too bad, but he, it did take him a couple of weeks to find like he, the first choices. Uh, they refused because they already have a truck trailer, you know, car, you know, some debts on visa, so so he had to do more thorough shopping. But I'm pretty sure he never told me anything about the $500 administration fee because, like I said, I assumed his services were being paid by the lender like it's done in, in the mortgage uh, business, right? The mortgage broker does not charge customers, like buyers, uh, any fees for their services because, you know, they find you a mortgage, fine, so the bank that gives the mortgage gives them their commission. That's how it's supposed to be, so I don't know, I'm not too happy about that. But anyway, so now instead of a thousand bucks, I have to give them sixteen hundred dollars, you know? And I still have to find money for for you know, dead heading over there to Kentucky. That's like 600 miles, all right. And from here, from this Danriel, it's another probably three, four hours. I'm I'm going to uh, Whitby, Ontario. But anyway, so, but it's so it's a good thing that I was working hard this past week. So uh, I'm looking at my uh, beginning mileage on uh, July 8th. On Monday in Calgary it was uh, 723395, that's miles. And just now I printed out my uh, logbook for today. And the ending mileage is 726418. <laughs> I forgot the last time I drove so much. So if you take 726418 minus 723395, that's 3023 miles. That's what I did in eight days. And it's all legal. So, guys, don't start calling Landstein and say, hey, this guy drove, drove like a maniac, you know, 24 hours a day. No, if, like you see, I, I told you, you see, I never even drove 600 miles a day. It was uh, 187 here, 9, 360, 536, 401, 491. But it's just that it all adds up because every day, well, except uh, Tuesday, 9th, when I was waiting for that second machine, so every day I was doing some miles. See, and it. So I guess if I was a company driver, now I'd be, I'd be, I probably be uh, richer. I think. <laughs> Forty cents per mile. Was it? Forty-two cents per mile. Anyway, so time now for a shower, some dinner, and then tomorrow morning I'm gonna start early and drive towards the towards the border. It's uh, an hour from here, Buffalo and uh, Peace Bridge, and then I'm gonna go uh, from there. I think it's about two and a half hours to my destination east of Toronto, and then I'm jumping in the truck and heading west towards Cambridge. Park the truck. Probably will have to go to a hotel for uh, for another night because I have to clean myself up before I uh, present myself to these uh, financial broker and the dealers because we wanted to sit down tomorrow. I don't know if I'll have time tomorrow because by the time I get back to Cambridge, you know, I have to change. I don't want to drive in the truck to the place there near Hamilton, the dealer. So I thought I would take my car, my Mazda 3. It's probably best to, to set it up for uh, 
Wednesday morning, I think, not for tomorrow. Yeah, so we do it Wednesday morning. We sign the papers, the lease, you know, I give them a blank check, I give them uh, that 1600 bucks I owe them. And I think they even will give me a plate, the new license plate for the trailer. And then I just, I can bobtail to US, pick up the trailer and maybe find, find a load on the way back. Oh, let me show you, uh, let me show you this forklift I have on. It's a weird looking machine. There it is, just the basic uh, forklift, very small tires. Uh, and it has a weird uh, front end. And what I mean by weird is this thing here. And it doesn't look like a heavy duty forklift because normally there's, you don't see this gap, right? So the, the forklift itself is much bigger. So. What is the uh, rated capacity? <laughs> Thirty-five hundred pounds. Unloaded mass without battery. Eleven. I don't know how it can weigh eleven thousand pounds without battery. Maximum service weight with battery. Or fourteen point six. Fourteen thousand six hundred with the battery. And yet, it can only lift 3,500 pounds. I don't know. And then it has this, see the charger? And I put two chains in the back because I wasn't sure about the weight and I didn't want to take any chances. And there's nowhere to put those uh, chains. There's one, one pin in there and that's it. I know sometimes when I was a tow truck driver, sometimes we would put the chain in here. But you know, this is plastic. And this is plastic. Only this part is steel. So if I use my chain, I really can, you know, tighten them. I would, I would break this thing. And that's the last thing I want to do is, uh, you know, guys, uh, they bought this at an auction, right? Military auction. And the last thing I want to do is, uh, bring him a broken forklift. Of course it's a used one, you know, but still. People paid money for it, you know, they expect something nice and uh, shiny looking. Well, that's what I have. I was trying to find uh, another LTL, but there's nothing. Nothing, every, every, all loads from here are, you know, full truck loads, like heavy loads, uh, you know. 40,000 pounds, 45,000 pounds. You know, I really love my uh, ladder. I don't know how I lived without it before. Uh oh, what is this? That's not good. That means that something was dragging. Oh, okay. I know what it is. It's probably my, uh, these things here. I was doing a very, couple of very uh, sharp turns but that's what that's how you damage the this if I put the winch in here see this mark right if I put, if I put my winch anywhere on this side of this black mark it it'll destroy the fender when I'm turning so. all right this is Monday uh, July 15th after 3,000 miles on the road